Hi, welcome back to my channel. This is Dr. Uchen Nailu. In this video, I want to talk about authenticity versus attachment or authenticity you know, versus approval, seeking for approval. Um, so this is going to be a series of videos I'm going to be doing on paradoxes. Uh, what's a paradox? Paradox is basically um, a persistent contradiction between interdependent um, elements. So it's a persistent tension that exists um, in creation, basically, it's in the universe. Um, we can see night and day, we can't have one without the other. Um, we can see life and death um, as the biggest um, evidences of. Um, of our duality that we live in um, yeah we can also see boy and girl uh, male and female we can see um, rich and poor uh, so we know that we have two polar ends of almost everything the two sides to a coin um, so today's discussion is going to be on authenticity and um, and approval or attachment as two different, uh, as two seemingly opposing elements, um, but we cannot do without them. Uh, so we need both of them really to survive. And yeah, so where does, where does attachment come from? Attachment is a, it's a desire to be, um, to be loved. Um, it's a desire to, to how will I put it? To come close to people um, so that they will approve of our behavior in order for our needs to be met. So the end product is to get our needs met and we need um, something like, um, like an intercessor, um, a middleman or so, you know, to get those needs met. And where do we get that behavior from? Of course, we know it's from our childhood. Um, the the human the human baby um, the the human infant that's just born um, is very vulnerable. In fact, the most vulnerable of all um, of all living beings. Um, I have uh, two little babies now, so I know what I know. So, and of course, there are, there are eight billion of us, so we know um, a child cannot survive. Um, without the parents or caregivers or somebody to take care of them. Uh, I mean, for years, they cannot survive on their own. Um, the, the requirements for survival as a human being um, are really um, not within the reach of an infant, even up to the year, even up to maybe like 10 years old or something. Uh, you're still going to find it difficult to live on your own in the wild. Yes, you might survive at then at ten, but as a baby, you're going to die because you can't move, you can't, you can't do anything. You need milk and all that. Yeah. So we always depended on our caregivers, our parents, for to get our needs met, um, food, uh, changing, everything, completely, utterly dependent. Um, then, um, so we learned these things for so many years, for a very long time and we, we get our needs met by asking people for things so we need them to help us um you know get things even just the basic education we need a teacher and you know, somebody to teach us how to read teach us so many things so we get attached to um to people places things it's part of our nature we need it for survival um we seek approval because we have been seeking approval from our parents um, for a very long time and if you don't get the approval you know there's going to be tension at home uh, so you have to behave in a way that will make them approve of whatever you're doing um, which means which most times means that you're suppressing your true identity you're suppressing your true voice and now how do i know there's a suppression there of course, it's all anecdotal. Um, um, there's probably evidence out there, uh, but I haven't done any research to, to that extent. But I can, I'll just give you example, an example, you know, from like it, my one and a half year old, what she does, you know, um, the, 
they act by pure gut, gut instinct. They, they are purely um, authentic. Uh, you know, um, toddlers and infants are purely authentic. They don't know any other thing. They don't carry any baggage in their mind. They don't think about the future or the past. So you see them, I mean, like you know, she tries to climb, you know, tables and climb chairs and do things that seem dangerous to us. Uh, and this is her being authentic, being her authentic self, you know, trying to wander into every room, wander, do anywhere, touch anything, pick anything up. Um, and we don't like it. So we are trying to correct her. Uh, so I've seen that there's no way, like, um, there's no way you can let anybody just be completely 100% free. It's not possible. Um, there has, like, there has to be some degree of control. So by doing that kind of, by telling her, don't do this, don't do this, don't do that, don't do that, you know, she's already learning that if she wants to get approval, um, if she wants to get her needs met, then she better not do some things. Yes, some of those things are good, are going to be good or beneficial for her, like, you know, don't touch fire, don't uh, don't play with knives or something uh, at, at that young age. Um, yeah, but there are other things, you know, I mean, if it becomes unhealthy, you also know uh, when parents are just triggered for nothing or when they use excessive force um, to patrol the child, um, yeah, it becomes worse for them when they grow up. So that's why we're us as adults, you know, we're always looking to how we're, we're always looking to our inner child and look, looking to how to heal the inner child. So authenticity, you know, is always at variance um, with with acceptance either from your parents or from society. Because when you grow up, you have already learned how to silence your voice and how not to um, how to behave well so that you will be accepted. Uh, I mean, we see it on social media too. Um, of course, we see the other side of There are some people that speak their mind, they are authentic here, yeah, but majority of the people, you know, just want to conform. And that's where the tension arises. How do we become authentic again? Uh, what is authenticity? Authenticity just means listening to your inner voice, your gut instinct. Um, and we know that if we do that, most times we're not going to um, get the approval of people, of most people, because everybody's unique. Everyone has their own unique take on controversial issues, on issues, you know, in the world. And if we say everything that, that we feel, if we just say everything that we feel about people, you know, we're, we're not going to get along with people at all. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So... That's where the clash is um, between being authentic and um, and having that need um, to be approved, or you know, and having that attachment uh, need, trying to please people basically um, to get what you want. And we need to be able to combine both of them because we can't survive without each of them. So we can take life as a game. You know, when we have to, we have to, when we are playing the authentic game, um, we need to take, we need to be careful with um, with the authenticity on its own because um, we're not alone in the world. So we also need to recognize other people's feelings in what we are saying and in what we are doing. Now that I'm not saying that you should. You should change your how I put it, your beliefs to accommodate um, other people. But if you're stating what you truly believe in all the time, then you must make an explanation. Um, you must create, you must establish a context first of all, and then make an explanation um, as to why you're doing what you're doing. That's the intellectual side of it. Um, takes a lot of it takes experience in in um, in diplomacy you know to be able to combine these two things and by that you can you can express your views no matter how controversial they are um, and still not be uh, how would I put it yeah and still like 
you can be an authentic uh, as soon as they step on other people's toes. Uh, I don't know, I think I'm just rambling now. <laughs> but I was just thinking about this today um, after observing my child, you know, trying to be her true self and us, the adults in the house, um, trying to control her from, from fully expressing who she is. And I could just extrapolate um, or, you know, the abstract lessons from that and transport it into, um, into my own present reality today uh, about being authentic and what it means to be authentic. Um, how do we just say, how do we say everything that we want to say um, without stepping on people's toes? Is it possible? No. Uh, you must step on toes. Um, you're going to be attacked. Um, so, the question to ask now is Am I going to be myself? Or am I going to do things that make other people happy? Either way, um, we have to survive in this, in this world. You know, but by being authentic, um, you're engaging with your superpower. You're engaging with who you are at the core. You're engaging with your full self, with your full mature self. But then again, you must temper it with um, with common sense, basically. Um, with the need to maintain peace and order in society. Um, you need to even question what you think is authentic because it may or may not be um, your true voice. Uh, so you need to do a deep analysis first and ask yourself why you think that what you're saying even makes sense or why you think that what you're doing or your behavior um, is the best approach to take. Uh, and by doing that questioning, yeah, you get to a better answer. So awareness basically um, is the bridge between being authentic and um, striving to be approved. Because by being authentic, you're also looking for approval from, from some certain kind of people. Uh, it may not be people that disagree with you, but from people that agree with you. So there's no, you can't do one without the other. It's not possible. Um, you know, both of them are interdependent somehow. So we just, we just need to find a way to get our needs met. Thank you, and I'll see you guys in another discussion. Bye.